We spoke with leaders in cardiology, nephrology, and genetics to understand how Fabry disease progresses and how we may be able to slow progression by addressing symptoms early. How do you monitor progression in Fabry disease? We try to minimize the amount of doctor visits, so I actually check the kidneys myself. I do the 24-hour urine protein creatinine ratio um, and the urine dipstick for them. And I only get the, the renal specialist involved if I start seeing some, some kidney changes despite them being on the treatment. Um, but at the very least, I get a cardiologist involved to do the echo and the MRI of the heart. And then I have a neurologist on board to, to look at their brain and assess for, for any possible strokes. And we do that once a year. There are other markers of, of disease. Um, you know, for instance, the, we look at EKGs to look for the, the PR interval. We look at, at echocardiograms uh, as well as cardiac MRIs to look for late ventricular gadolinium enhancement and if that has uh, progressed. MRIs of the brain to see has white matter disease in the brain progressed. We also have a list of um, things that we kind of keep track of in Febre disease. So we have labs that we do, we have imaging studies that we'll get um, on a regular basis. And I also ask the patients how they're doing, how does their cardiologist think they're doing, what's the eye doctor telling them, things like that. Um, but you have to have a pretty planned agenda when you're not seeing people as frequently. Uh, to make sure that you don't miss anything, that you address all of the needs. So you can do those sorts of things, send out quality of life surveys. You can do these sorts of things as frequently as you want. And once again, it, that's going to inform how things are. You get the granular data that you're not going to get from a cardiac MRI. I can tell you your heart looks fine on an MRI, but that doesn't mean you feel okay. So PRO data have, have increasingly become a part of what we do in cardiovascular medicine in general. What does proactive treatment mean for your patients? I often describe the treatment to patients as a plateauing medication, um, taking kind of a snapshot of where your disease progression is at that point and drastically slowing it from progressing moving forward. So the earlier you start it, the better. So if you don't already have kidney damage, it will help prevent or at least slow down the kidney damage quite significantly uh, moving forward. So when you look at the natural history of this disease, the disease gets worse over time. That's the definition of progressive. So as a, a physician, I'm not just treating the patient in front of me. I'm treating the patient in front of me who's going to age in 30 years. And with any luck, I'll be that same doctor treating that patient. So, so we gotta start thinking not treating the person in front, but treating the person in front 30 years from now and say, how can I make their lives better, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 years from now? And, uh, and weigh the risk and benefits of therapies. If we are able to treat this disease successfully, hopefully we can, one, treat the underlying physiology in a way that helps to uh, minimize the impact. Two, makes the burden of, of the chronic disease less. And that combined effect should lead to um, more of a sense of hope and a better uh, quality of life uh, on an emotional level as well as on a physical level. Chiesi Global Rare Diseases is committed to working with the Fabre community to move forward together. And now, an important note from the sponsor about the participants in this video.